Hi, Luke Edwards here, Vehicle Collections at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum. We're sitting here with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course, the Grand Prix Course just outside the windows behind us, and I'm next to an absolute icon of a car, the Forsyth Racing Skull Bandit number 33. Uh, Forsyth Racing has had uh, championships and race wins with drivers like Paul Tracy um, all the way up through the mid-2000s. But we're going to go back to 1983 right now and talk about rookie sensation Teo Fabi. Now Teo Fabi uh, started in Europe racing go-karts. He won the 1975 European Karting Championship. By 1977, he had won the Formula Ford Championship and fast forward all the way to 1982, he was racing in Formula One. Now come 1983, he decided to try his hand in American open wheel racing. And in the early 80s, this was an era that they had just started consistently racing over 200 miles an hour, uh, playing with ground effects. You can see around the nose and in the cockpit area. Uh, they really just started experimenting with carbon fiber and composite materials. The cars are getting lighter, they're getting faster. Well, Teo Fabi didn't seem too intimidated by that because he put this March 83C on pole in its first ever Indianapolis 500 start. And it didn't just end there. He led the first 23 laps of the race and in dominant fashion. He pulled away from second place and continued to build that lead. He came in for his first pit stop. Throughout the pit stop shuffles, he loses the lead, but he stays in contention. Then comes lap 47. Still one of the odds on favorites, poised to challenge for the win in his first ever Indy 500. He comes in on lap 47, and they have a problem with the refueling process, and they actually have a failure of one of the O-rings where the fuel buckeye is. So fuel starts pouring out of the side of the car, obviously can't continue, the race is over. But Fabi's season didn't end with that disappointment. He continued the rest of the season, ended up winning four races, finishing second in the championship to none other than legend and four-time Indianapolis 500 winner, Alan Sir Sr. and won Rookie of the Year honors. One of those four wins came at the Pocono 500, so he did make his mark at the super speedways, as well as winning on some of the road courses too. Now, Fabi started getting offers from Formula One and went back to F1 from 1984 to 1987 and ended up returning to IndyCar in another car that we actually have featured in our From the Vault exhibit, the 1990 Porsche, which is one of the lowest cars on record of ever racing at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, very sleek machine. His best finish at Indy ended up being seventh. He ended up having five wins, 12 podiums, and 10 pole positions. So that's just sheer speed, raw talent. Uh, Fabi was a very soft-spoken man of few words, but when you got him behind the wheel of a beast like this, he had absolutely no fear, and he let his driving do the talking. So one of my favorite things about this car and this era of car is this is right on the cusp before March ended up having 30 of 33 cars on the Indianapolis 500 field. They really left their mark on American open wheel racing and the cars are just getting more and more compact. They're getting more sleek, but they're, they're still all motor, uh, big turbocharged V8s, screaming loud engines. Um, and, and really a handful and they just have that iconic 80s look. It almost looks like it has the profile of like a Lamborghini Diablo or something of, of that nature. This car is definitely an icon. We're really happy that we could have had it up here since last November. Um, we're happy to share this with you and we hope that you guys enjoy the videos. But in conclusion, one of the most impressive months of May from a rookie at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
in this car right here. The Forsyth Racing Skull Bandit number 33, driven by Teo Fabi.